think we may have another shark problem. Are you serious? Jaws 2 is the 1978 sequel to the 1975 colossal box office hit film classic. Three or four years after the events of the first film, Amity Island in New England is thriving, looking forward to the summer business season. Chief of Police Martin Brody, played by Roy Scheider, and his wife Ellen, played by Lorraine Gary, join the town in festivities around the opening of a brand new hotel. New in town is the developer and businessman Len Peterson, played by Joseph Moscolo, who seems to be attracted to Ellen. Thank you. Ellen, honey, would you be a love? Make sure that the bar is open and everyone is taken care of and happy, hmm? Happy, sure. Yes, sir. Fantastic lady. Don't know what I would do without her. Really? Neither do I. In the meantime, several strange events take place. First, a great white shark kills two scuba divers photographing the wreckage of the Lake Quint's boat, the Orca, from the events of the last film. Their camera, which took pictures during the attack, is recovered the following day. Beachgoers then discover the huge carcass of a chewed-up killer whale washed up on shore. The shark then kills a female water skier while the driver of the boat attempts to kill the shark by using a flare gun, but the boat explodes, killing her and severely burning the right side of the shark's face. <laughs> Brody fears that another massive man-eating shark may be menacing the waters off of Amity Island. One minute they were having a wonderful time, and the next... You have no idea what could have caused this. I don't know what could have done that. He finds resistance from Mayor Vaughn, played by Murray Hamilton, reluctant to go through the same events all over again especially with new business in the town for the summer season. No fin, no sharks, nothing but a boating accident. We have a lot of deaths in these waters that never turn up. Are they all shark victims? Maybe they are. Oh, bullshit. Bullshit? Is it bullshit I got a whale on the beach with a bite in it this big? Martin, don't press it this time. The chief's 17-year-old son, Mike Brody, played by Mark Gruner, is trying to enjoy sailing in the waters despite his dad's protests. He hangs out with a group of teenagers including Doug, played by Keith Gordon, Jackie, played by Donna Wilkes, the mayor's son, Larry Jr., played by David Elliott, and Miss Amity, Tina Wilcox, played by Ann Dusenberry. Brody mistakes a school of bluefish for a shark and fires his gun, causing a panic on the crowded beach. Bluefish! Chief! It's a school of bluefish! It's just bluefish! After the film from the diver's camera is developed, a photograph showing the eye of a great white shark gives him definitive proof that the recent events have been caused by a shark. That that's a shark. And I know what a shark looks like because I've seen one up close. And you better do something about this one because I don't intend to go through that hell again. After showing the findings to a skeptical town council, Brody is voted out as police chief. He returns home to Ellen and Deputy Hendricks, played by Jeffrey Kramer, drunk and upset that his warnings about the shark have been disregarded. Come on, drink for Christ's sakes. It's a milestone in your career. He's up, Martin. Look, Chief, not only don't I want your job, but I came over to tell you that I think you're the greatest. And I... Oh, Jeff, it's okay. Come on, it's not your fault. I know that. 
When both of Brody's sons and their friends all head out on the water to go sailing, the shark attacks, leaving it up to Brody to hunt down the beast once and for all. Are you okay? Helen, I'm sorry. Believe me, I'm sorry. I was only thinking of everyone's interest in... I don't give a damn what you're thinking. All I know is a boy is dead and my son and husband are still out there. Steven Spielberg was approached to direct this film, and Richard Dreyfuss was approached to star in the sequel, but production on Close Encounters of the Third Kind was running behind, and they both declined to participate. Richard Dreyfuss did not want to return for Jaws 2 if Steven Spielberg wasn't directing. This film, under John D. Hancock's direction and Dorothy Tristan's writing, originally had a different tone and premise. The plot was that Amity was sort of a ghost town with several businesses shuttered and the island's economy in ruins due to the events of the first film. The new resort and condos built on the island by Len Peterson were to help celebrate its rebirth, giving the island's economy a much-needed boost. Tristan had also borrowed a subplot from the original Jaws novel and from a discarded early draft of the first movie in which Amity officials were in debt to the Mafia. Both Mayor Vaughn and Len Peterson were anxious for the New Island Resort to be a success, not just to revive Amity, but also to pay back loans from the mob that helped build it. That was the reason Vaughn and Peterson ignored Brody's shark warnings. There was another plot idea for this film put forward by Universal President Sidney Scheinberg that his wife Lorraine Gary's character, Ellen Brody, should go out on a boat and help rescue the kids. John D. Hancock told Scheinberg, Ugh over my dead body. This, along with firing an actress who turned out to be a studio executive's girlfriend, contributed to Hancock's dismissal from the film. The first movie's writer, Carl Gottlieb, was brought in to revise the script, adding humor and reducing some of the dark tone. Gottlieb wrote on location at Fort Walton Beach, Florida. It cost the producers more money to hire Gottlieb to do the rewrite than it would have been if they had hired him in the first place. Production lasted five months, between August and December 1977. Martha's Vineyard was again used as the location for the town scenes, and most of the movie was shot in Navarre Beach, Florida. Many scenes had to be shot in the fall and winter months, and as such, the actors had to suck on ice cubes prior to takes to avoid having their breath seen on camera. Roy Scheider did not want to appear in this film, but he had recently left the production of the movie The Deer Hunter, which led to conflicts with Universal Pictures, with whom he was locked into a multi-film contract. The studio said they would forgive his leaving The Deer Hunter if he did Jaws 2, which they would count as the two remaining films of his contract with them. Scheider agreed to the terms, but was resentful of his involvement from the outset, and clashed frequently with director Geno Zoic. Roy Scheider was paid $400,000 to reprise the role of Chief Brody, four times what he got paid for the original film. Murray Hamilton's scenes were shot quickly because his wife was ill at the time and he wanted to spend time with her. John Williams returned to score Jaws 2 after winning an Academy Award for Best Original Score for his work on the first film. Chief? Chief Brody, can, can we go please? Yes, thank you, Tim. Anne Dusenberry and Roy Scheider would start together in the 1986 drama film The Men's Club, and the two would share a very sweaty, topless sex scene. Susan Ford, daughter of U.S. President Gerald Ford, was hired to shoot publicity photographs. Many of those photos appeared in Ray Leunard's Jaws 2 Log, a book documenting the film's production, similar to what Carl Gottlieb had done for the first movie. Although the first film was commended for leaving the shark to the imagination until two-thirds of the way through, Geno Zuak felt that they should show the shark as much as possible because the dramatic first image of it coming out of the water in the first movie could never be replicated. The filmmakers also decided to nearly kill the shark at the beginning of the movie so that it would have a scarred face, giving it a more ominous appearance. This is the first American film sequel to actually use the number two in its title, as opposed to Roman numerals. Once, there was a terrible tragedy here. But today, Amity has a new hotel and the promise of a perfect summer. 
The Godfather Part 2 in 1974 had part in the title, and the 1975 hit French Connection 2 used Roman numerals. The first film to ever do this in the world was the British film Quartermass 2 in 1957. On the Brody's front porch, one can see a flower planter painted bright yellow. It's actually one of the barrels from the first movie. This film inspired much more merchandise and sponsors than the first movie. Products included sets of trading cards from Topps, paper cups from Coca-Cola, beach towels, shark tooth necklaces, coloring books, activity books, and even a model kit of Brody's vehicle. Marvel Comics published a comic book adaption written by Richard E. Marshall and drawn by Gene Colan. It was published in the magazine-style Marvel Super Special and included an interview with the director, Jeno Zowick. This was the only Jaws film to be adapted into a comic book. The movie was very heavily advertised and very heavily hyped. In all the vast and unknown depths of the ocean, how could there have been only one? Jaws 2. The terror continues. Jaws 2. Rated PG. Friday. At theaters everywhere. Upon its release into theaters, Jaws 2 grossed $9.9 million domestically in its opening weekend, then the biggest opening weekend gross in history, breaking the record set by the first film in 1975. Jaws 2 grossed a worldwide total of $208 million and was among the top 10 highest grossing films of 1978 in the United States. The tagline for this film, just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, would become one of, if not the most famous movie tagline in history. Staff copywriter Karen Levitt is credited with coining the phrase. I think is the most memorable movie tagline of all time. Now, just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, the legend continues. Now, had I been in charge of Jaws 2, I would have done a few things very differently. First, I would have waited as long as I had to to have Steven Spielberg direct. No offense at all to the director, Jan Ozowick. He did a great job. But when you have the same director from an original film, it usually makes for a smoother production. Secondly, I would have begged and pleaded and paid him anything he wanted to have Richard Dreyfuss reprise his role from the first film. It would have been great to have Brody and Hooper back out there trying to stop a shark again. Third, I would have written Murray Hamilton's character of Mayor Larry Vaughn to be much more sympathetic than he was in this film. After the events of the first movie, his character seemed remorseful of not having taken action against the shark sooner. I would have written his character in Jaws 2 to be much more proactive to try and take care of the shark before things got out of hand. Sort of like, uh, Brody, this time we're going to do it. This time we're going to get it. You kind of just rehashed the first movie by making his character the exact same way he was before. Then again, he plays a politician, so perhaps it would have been the same old, same old. Interestingly enough, there are many deleted scenes from this film involving Murray Hamilton's character. Many of them show up frequently on television broadcasts of the film. Look, what am I supposed to do? It's over. Most of the scenes show him adamantly defending Brody in the face of opposition from the town council and businessmen. Brody's a good man. Nobody says he is. Well, you should have been there. There is also a deleted scene of Vaughn voting against removing Brody as chief of police. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Another deleted scene had Mayor Vaughn consoling a distraught Ellen Brody at the harbor, likely sympathetic to Brody after he saves the mayor's son from the shark, and presumably would get his job back. 
I think all of these scenes should have been left in the final film. I don't like the way that the character of Brody gets shit on so badly in this film. Although, to be honest, there isn't any real event that makes everyone assume that there is another shark. Think about it. In the first film, right off the bat, you have a girl killed in a shark attack. No question. This is no boat accident. In this film, you have missing divers, a boat explosion, a whale carcass, but no real signs of a shark. I would have written this movie very differently. I saw this film when I was a very young kid, and despite my critique, it is probably the best Jaws sequel, and nothing can ever compare to the original film. I should also note that all the teenage characters being hunted down by the shark was a sign that we were headed towards the early 1980s, Friday the 13th, teenage horror slasher phase of movies. Overall, this is a good sequel, and I'll go ahead and recommend the 1978 hit, Jaws 2. See it before you go back in the water. <laughs>